What is up, risk takers? Welcome to the Kill Pete Strategy. I am Pete. I'm a top risk player. I have a daily release on YouTube on both Kill Pete Strategy and Free Pete. If you are interested in getting better at risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channels. Come along the ride with me. And folks, welcome to another edition of Map Master Mondays. We're taking a look at every map in the game one by one and putting them into a tier list for free for all progressive world on. This is Troy. And we start. Can I snag anything easy and early? Plus three bottom left looks okay. Or Troja proper. We won't hold on a plus five. I think we use plus three bottom left to take Troja proper. And we'll be ideally in a two position play. I figure purple moves out like this. And then we take this turn two, and then we work on this turn three. Uh, other than that, I don't fortify. I'm going to lose my other two to black. Show you guys the settings. This is map, Master Mondays. We've reached Troy. Free for all progressive world bomb. Auto 60. Expert automated bot. We don't start with any. We'll probably have one or two. Nothing fancy. No fog. No, no blizz. No portals. No alliances. I'm in the first position playing as orange. In the second seat, the red player's Atom from USA. In the third seat, and he's just gifted a plus five across the bottom, plus four of step housing. The black player in the third seat is Supernova, 41. Uh, in position four is Blastones from Vietnam, playing as purple. The green player is Umur Ozcan from Turkey. And in the ultimate seat is Mahala Fukunaga, playing as white, also USA flag. So... You guys want to see the bonuses on Troy? There are many, and that's part of what makes this map cool. North Town plus four, West Town plus four, City Market plus six, South Town plus three. You've two two for twos of Temple and Sayin Gate. Lower Town plus five, Labor Housing plus five, Step Housing plus four, Rich Housing plus three, Scholars plus three. Troja in the top right corner is plus five on a two point, which I love. And Upper Town in the middle plus eight, if you can hold it. Uh, also, we have this very interesting territory of trojan horse in the middle of the board and this territory connects to one two three four five six seven eight nine other territories we do lose our two saw that coming a mile away uh it's not the most number of um connection points from a single territory in the game but it is very useful if you're playing this game in fog i like troy spoil the surprise a bit i do really enjoy this map Fully expecting this three to leave my Bionio. <laughs> Come on, dude. Fully expecting that three to leave my Bionio. What are you doing? Come on. Okay, he's going to roll four. He's going to walk out. Thank you. Okay, so I take this. And then I start working on this. I like that. Two position, both generating, ideally. That's where we want to be. That's absolutely where we want to be. Okay, green steals. Black didn't protect themselves at all. <laughs> green can still steal. Okay, no, he's dumb and he rolls a 4v2 and loses all his troops. I got a bad feeling that green isn't very good. And what do we do if we're white? White probably puts on the left-hand side. Or maybe they take this. White can actually have a turn one bonus if they do it properly. If they do that. They do not. Okay. White doesn't see their turn one bonus, and they don't take it. They break red. <laughs> they do break red. Love that. Love that D-bag play style. Okay. Turn two. Yeah, red's like, fuck. All right, so one troop here, one troop here, and the rest here. Give black an opportunity maybe to retaliate on. Yeah. 
green. Let's see if they do. What does red do? Red retakes that bonus. I'm gonna roll five e two. They're almost certainly gonna hit. White plays thorn in the side rather than trying to take their own position. Yep, red retakes and red probably removes white from this position. No, they're only interested in guarding. Red is thinking small. Connects the two in. Attacks for no reason. All right. Start to uh, get the sense of how my opponents are playing this game. So Troy was the second map for the Lost Cities map pack. Um, do you enjoy? Do you enjoy Troy? I like the fact that there's a ton. It's a really good fixed map, fixed seventy, fixed world. Um, it's it's got a lot of little bonuses that are that are impactful and meaningful. So there's lots of play to different positions. Black playing glacially slowly. Surprised that green would pop a three, but not break the bonus. This gives black a chance to retaliate, assuming they're still with us, which, as we all know, is a big assumption. All right, pace this game going real slow. We can do a Q&A question. What is this, the fucking second turn? Guys, get with it. <laughs> get with it. All right, our next Q&A question is from Un. Balanced Blitz. Hello. How you doing, Unbalanced? Uh, in this age, the internet has a misses a card, too. Oh, boy. In this age, the internet has almost been synonymous with anonymity. People can create fake names, do whatever they want online, and not take accountability for it, unlike in-person discourse, for the most part. Personally, this is a worrying sign, as the anonymity, anonymity incentivizes people to do such things. Although companies in charge of such platforms, Meta, X, etc., have rules regarding this, they are rarely enforced. Do you think more accountability should be held for those who commit unacceptable acts online, such as cyberbullying, online sexual harassment? If yes, in what ways? As an extension, what do you think of cancel culture? Is it defined as withdrawing support for someone publicly and often on social media, which is supposedly to force someone to be accountable for their words or actions? Great. Lots of questions there. Lots to talk about. Um anonymity so the quintessential anonymous platform 4chan what types of speech are popular common available on 4chan literally anything and everything so if you okay green has bought it. if you allow people the freedom to act anonymously um can you trust that people will behave well well no no you can't uh, <laughs> no, you cannot. So given that, what do we do? Um, let's take, let's take the risk community as a microcosm, because this is the community I've had the most involvement in. Um, I became an event helper on the main risk discord immediately after my first tournament. Um, I was made a uh, server staff in October of that year. Um, I helped out for three tournaments as an event, an event helper. Um, before I was promoted, um, I have been a moderator on the risk subreddit for now more than a year, something like that, more or less. I moderate my own comments on YouTube, which is absolutely not a free speech platform and absolutely allows for people to comment anonymously. So I have a lot to say about this unbalance. So how do I answer your specific question? Companies in charge of such platforms have rules regarding these. Yes, YouTube has uh, rules that limit my free speech, your free speech. Why would White move into my bow now, though? Why would White move into my bow now? Um, okay. Well, they don't want me to take a second right away. I see that being a reasonable decision for them. just hit that we just hit them out of the pocket white just seems to be an annoying player no i think we'll let them we'll let them experience why why their play style sucks <laughs> on their own time um
So accountability in our tournaments was important. Originally, when we came, um, when I came around, alternative um, alt accounts, alternative risk accounts were the norm. You were allowed to compete anonymously in our tournaments, which was just the most adorably stupid thing I've ever, I could ever imagine. And you could immediately see how that would be abused and taken advantage of. Now, there are ways to compete anonymously still, right? You just have to be dishonest to do it, right? But having it be legal was definitely part of the problem. Um, this is good that he didn't finish that second bonus. This is quite good. So we got alts out of tournaments. That was a great step. Now, if you look at this most recent season, um, where I get directly sniped in my, in my round one game, um, this sort of thing happens, right? So anonymity incentivizing bad action. I wouldn't say incentivize it. It allows for, that's how I would, how I would use the language. It allows for bad action in a way, but you can't police it. So this is the second part of your question. Um, do you think more accountability should be held for those who commit unacceptable acts? Sure, should be. But if we're talking about world of ought, um, how would you create those constraints? Um, how would you go about ensuring that people um, take, take again, take me for an example, right? I've always played as Pete. I've always been Pete. I've used my public identity. Now, this might be a, to a large extent because I'm an older person, right? So I've used my public identity as um, my online identity. And I know a lot of people growing up inside. See, I, I grew up before the internet, right? So growing up inside the internet, you might be more conscious about your privacy. I've always been a public person, so there's no, there's no hiding from it. Um, but also, I'm not afraid, right? I'm not afraid to be unapologetically myself. Um, final question. This is the, this is the meat of the question. To what extent, as extension, what do you think of cancel culture is defined as withdrawing support for someone publicly and often on social media, which is supposedly to force someone to be accountable for their own words or actions. Okay. So I have noticed, and I think this is a failure of the medium right, of the internet in general. I have noticed that the way in which arguments are made online tend to lean towards a character assassination style. This guy's an asshole, and therefore you should not listen to anything he has to say. Now that is very, very poor quality argumentation, if I've ever heard it. The reality, the reason this is such a problem. The reality is actually a lot more complex than that. Um, human beings are both good and bad in varying degrees and in all sorts of ways. And that's you. And that's me. You're both good and bad. And I'm both good and bad. Um, so the fact that we can exist in this polarity um, where this guy who might have a tremendously large amount of really useful ideas to share. Um, would would find their voice limited or silenced. Now, now, folks, do we do we think we're going to hit that seven? Do we think we're going to hit that? Seven? I think we're going to hit that seven. <laughs> we lose two on a seven. Sweet. Not bad. And now we have Shoujo. Hope you have a set on three. <laughs> All right, I have a good position now. Very plus three, plus five. Red sets, gets the four. I think red just takes their second bonus, but red's going to be in a single position. Right? I'm going to be in two, and I like that I'm in two, and they're both going to be generative. All right, I wanted to talk about this. Here's the time we talk about it. Cancel culture, okay? What you said is bad. Therefore... I'm going to ensure that you are silenced. Now, how cowardly, how pathetic does your position have to be as a person to require the silence of another? If their position is untrue, if it is wrong, then, it's, then it fails on its own merit, right? If someone is speaking words that are untrue, why not let them speak and dig their own grave? 
So silencing a person who says things that you might not agree with exposes how weak your own position is. I can separate the art from the artist, right? Um, take the example of someone like Michael Jackson, right? Michael Jackson was accused of all sorts of horrible things in his life. Did he do them? I don't know, right? If he's convicted in a court of law, we can say he probably did those things he was convicted of, but you still never know for sure, and he wasn't convicted in a court of law. But whether or not he did all of those things does not inhibit my ability to enjoy his music. And this goes for intellectuals as well, right? Um, throughout history, philosophers will have um, ideas that are controversial, that are hated in their time, right? And that's normal. And whenever someone is causing a very strong emotional response in their argumentative opponent, that's a sign that they're winning. <laughs> so yelling, I, I, I often make this joke when I'm arguing with my girlfriend, right? It's like, if I can, I can tell that you're, that you're losing the argument when the volume goes up. <laughs> right because you've run out of rational um comprehensive arguments to make and you just you switch you switch to the emotional attack or the personal attack so this is what i'm talking about with cancel culture right as someone who is now choosing to make his living speaking on the internet um the disparagement of a man's character as opposed to the refutation of a man's argument um, is a pathetic exposition of the weakness of the counter-argument. We'll leave it with that. Great, great question on balance. I could talk about this some more, but I need more. You can't just be like, what do you think of cancel culture? You got to be like more specific, and then I can probably talk for longer. Because I just felt like this question was too broad, and I had way too much to say. I think White's trying to play this multi-positionally rather than, um, a, like rather than bonus style. And this, oh, he is going to break me. Ah, too bad. I was hoping he didn't have a set on three. Uh, fuck you, Naga. <laughs> fuck me, Naga. Fuck you, Naga. Okay, no, he puts them in the middle of the board. Okay, White wants that position to exist. Did it break red again? Oh, White, you're such a prick. <laughs> <laughs> He's such an asshole. Oh my god. This guy's the legit worst guy. <laughs> it's like, why? Why? <laughs> White is the worst guy. Holy shit. I'm in a very strong spot now. Two point on a plus five with most of my troops on the other side of the board. And we had half of the players set early. <laughs> this is a really good position. How do I lose this game? Almost like a black. Hopefully black doesn't set on three and we get, it. We get their kill in one more turn. <laughs> Red's just removing white entirely from this existence. Yes, Red's like, fuck you. <laughs> okay, and Greenbot also gonna set. Okay. I have kill lines on black if they don't trade. I have kill lines on white anyways. Purple's still kind of in one position. And I have like all of this bot material kind of separating me from the rest of the board. So next turn, assuming um, black doesn't set here, I have 100% kill on black. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take that one down. Whether or not he gets a card here. <laughs> I've been waiting. I, I feel like this man has not been playing. Supernova is busy doing his dishes or something. 
All right, sir. Well, it's been a pleasure. It's been an absolute slice. And he gets a card just in the nick of time. No, he sets. That's a bummer. That's a real bummer, man. Not too bad. This guy's totally doing this on purpose, too. All right. Does green set? Can do the same thing to green. 100% kill on green. And that set kill green set, right? Yes, purple. Hit that one green territory. Makes it easier for me. Yes, hit it. Now green needs to not trade. Ha! Sets. Good. At least he sets next to red. Green bot going to break red. Moves the black exterior. Ooh, doesn't break red. Red gets lucky. It's a bonus taker, not a bonus breaker. <laughs> Why is going to break red again? <laughs> He's going to... Wow, red is so useless. What an incredible, incredible player. It's rare you see someone quite this useless. Good game, fucko. Now I have too much, so I'm going to take some hits. I'll be the next to trade, hopefully lined up to make another kill. Red should be happy that I killed white. Nope. Red's going to break me. Red's going to kill purple? So red's going to punish me for letting him hold. Well, I'm glad white broke you then, because you're also an asshole. Curious to see what black does here. It doesn't really matter the cards, right? All right? Well, that all that move all that move does is teaches me that I shouldn't let uh, let red hold anything. Does black take a card? I'm going to say no. I'm going to say black wastes his entire turn and doesn't play. He's a supernova of wasting time. We'll be able to get the green kill and then beat the shit out of black, I think. You know, he's going to get... Yeah, he's skipping on purpose. 
That's fucking pathetic. What a loser. <laughs> this play style is ridiculous. <laughs> I love that. Give me the green kill. Herpy. Kill green set kill purple, I think might be on the table. What's the trade? 20. It's it's early. But I still hold Troja. Green's just gonna retake. <laughs> nope. Green's gonna break his neighbor. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, break his neighbor. Yes! Fuck you, Red! <laughs> I love that. The heel turn for Green. Yes. I hope you have a set, Red. Shit, fuck you. Now you hold nothing. <laughs> right? Now you hold absolutely nothing. You're dumb. And you die. Now, if any of these guys have a set, I'm in trouble. Just want to be lined up to make a kill now. Okay, red does trade. This is why I single stack. Red isn't using his clock efficiently, so even if he wanted to hit me, he won't have enough time to. I figure purple's now on the ropes. 85 stack, though, real scary. Black's playing such an interesting style where he does... Is he going to just hit my stack out of nowhere? <laughs> he is, isn't he? <laughs> That's not a bad move if you want to fucking play for second. Just give it to black? You're so dumb, Red. Oh, no. He's going to hit my stack. He's going to... He's going he's gonna to pop it, guys. Wapa! Yes. Yes. Okay. All right, we know the type of player Red is now. And we're glad someone capped him down. Red is a piece of shit. Now Black takes a ton, right? Yeah, he immediately shows up and takes a ton of board. No. Okay. Is purple? Ooh, is purple going to be viable? We're going to be viable. So interesting. Indeed, it is a risky move. Who is this fucking guy? Adam, you fucking suck. <laughs> You're not playing to win at all. <laughs> Purple also skips. Wow. Okay. It's on three cards. Probably have set on four. If purple skips and black skips, then we do have a set. What's next? Next we kill purple, I think. 
Yeah, hit my tent. Maybe you kill purple. You have the juice? Won't set you. Oh, he's hacking. <laughs> yeah. All right, we got a hacker, folks. We got a hacker that doesn't even move. All right, well, that's fun. There you have it. Hope you enjoyed. Um, I'll show you where this one stacks up. That's my first hacker. Wow. Never gotten a hacker rank before. Uh, Troy. Okay, so Troy is good. Troy's a good map. Um, Troy's a big open map where the bonuses matter. Do I like it more than Mont Saint Michel? No. Do I like it more than Modern Spain? No. Do I like it more than Asia? More than Boston? More than Japan? I like it more than Stockholm. That's where I'm fitting in Troy. I like Troy better than Conquest of Stockholm. Right here in the second row. Not quite as good as Atlantis, but it's a really good map, and I love it. Um, and I hope you do too, folks. So thank you for watching. Um. What do you guys like with, with the tier list? What do you dislike, agree with, disagree with? I um, hope you all enjoyed this video. If you are interested in getting better at the Game of Risk, I invite you to subscribe to my channels and come along the ride with me. I have a daily release on YouTube. I do weekday streams on Twitch. For all of you on the path to world domination, good games and good luck.